So now that we have a new way to write our backwards differentiation, aka integration, we are going to adapt some of our rules from before uh, and write them in integration form instead of differentiation form. So we knew from before that the derivative of a constant times x is a constant. And so now we're just looking at the reverse. If you integrate or anti-differentiate a constant, you should get a constant times x plus some constant, other constant. So the integral of kx, k, I'm sorry, the integral of k dx is kx plus c. Now the power rule, this one we talked about when we were looking at parts b and d on the previous page. The power rule for integrals is going to be similar but opposite, of course, of the power rule for derivatives. For derivatives, pull your power down and subtract one off. And so we have to do the opposite of that. We have to add one to the power and then divide by the new power. So it's opposite in both ways. Okay. Now, make a note, of course, that you couldn't do this for n equals negative 1 because if you put a negative 1 right here in the denominator, you'd have 1 divided by 0 and your rule's going to break. So it's going to work for any n that is not negative 1. We'll get to what you do with specifically negative 1 in a later note. Okay. Uh, constant multiple rule, we had this for derivatives as well. If you have a constant times the function, you can just take the constant out of the integral, deal with the function, then multiply it by it. So same thing we did for derivatives. You can keep the constant multiple, then do the derivative. We can keep the constant multiple, then do the antiderivative. Same thing, some are different. You can do the derivative of two pieces separately. You can also do the antiderivative of two pieces separately. And so that rule is um, similar to what we saw with derivatives. So let's use these first four rules here to do some antiderivatives or indefinite integrals. All right, so the first one, I want the integral of 14 dx. That's a constant, and so it's going to integrate into 14x plus c. That's it, 14x plus c. Now I have x to the fifth, so that's going to integrate into... I always leave some space when I'm doing power rules so I can come back and put the coefficient. So it's x to the 5 plus 1 is 6, then times 1 divided by 6 plus c. Sometimes instead of putting it as 1 over 6, sometimes we'll write it instead as x to the 6 over 6, just putting the division in the bottom, depending on how we want the notation written. Same thing, of course, right? Multiplying by 1, 6, or dividing by 6. And, and c was going to be a combination of the constant multiple rule and the power rule. So we'll think about that 7 as being outside of the integral. So 7 times the integral of x to the 8th dx. And then we'll leave the 7 alone. Leave a little bit of space for that power rule. And then I have my x to the 8 plus 1 is 9. And then times the 1 9th plus c. And then... I'm going to put those back together as 7 ninths x to the ninth. Okay, now I'm going to talk about this one for just a second because it occurs to me that you may be wondering, I probably was at this point when I first did calculus, whether or not that 7, since it's pulled outside of this integral, should really be affecting that c or not. So what if you had thought that this should have been 7 times 1 ninth x to the ninth plus c. Does that 7, I forgot to write this, I was so excited about the plus c for a second, I forgot to write something right here. Which one of these is true? And what it actually turns out to be is that when you distribute the 7, we have 7 ninth uh, x to the ninth plus, we're going to call it c still, it's just a new c. That c is seven times the old c, but it's just a new c because it's an arbitrary constant. So we keep it simplified, expanded as much as possible. We want the simplified version. We're going to keep it like this. That c is the same c. These two c are the same c. That c was just some other c. Okay, we simplify them, uh, collect all of our c's. If you have two arbitrary constants that add up together, they still give you an arbitrary constant. If you have an arbitrary constant times seven, it's still an arbitrary constant. If any more questions about that, let me know. But we just kind of keep our c's as simple as possible since they're arbitrary anyway. I don't know their value. I'm not going to find their value. They're going to stay arbitrary. Okay. Now, looking at the next one, uh, we have a couple instances here of power rule and the sum difference rule. So we're going to start with the x to the 20th, add 1. That's x to the 21st over 21, new power, plus 
Okay, so we've got our x to the negative eighth plus one is gonna be x to the negative seven over new power negative seven plus c. And then it's not technically simplified with a negative in the bottom, so we'll just clean that up. If you wanna write your one over 21, x to the 21 minus one over seven, x to the negative seven plus c, there's a variety of ways you could write that. You can keep this as a fraction. Technically the x to the seventh could drop into the bottom. A lot of different rewrite possibilities there. All right, taking a look at the next page, we've got some more examples. Determine, i.e. evaluate the following indefinite integrals. All right, so we may have to rearrange these using some pre-calc, using some factoring, canceling, expanding to get them simplified. So in the first one, we're actually very familiar with having to rewrite radicals. We had to do that for derivatives as well, so we're gonna do that here. So if I wanna integrate, I already know how to handle 8x to the third minus 3, so I'll leave those alone, plus the 6 cube root of x. I know it's x to the 1 third power, and then our dx. So I just want to rewrite the radical because I had to do that to differentiate anyway. So we're going to rewrite that so we can use the power rule on it. Okay, so now we have our 8x to the, add 1 to the power, that's 4 now, and divide by 4, minus 3. There are as a constant, so it's going to be 3 times x for its derivative constant multiple constant rule, not constant multiple rule. That's the first one, the constant rule. And then the power rule again, this is going to be 6x to the, if I add 1, that's going to become 4 thirds. And instead of dividing by 4 thirds, we're going to multiply by its reciprocal, same thing, 3 fourths, and then plus our c, clean things up, that gives us 2x to the fourth, minus 3x, this cleans up into uh, 9 halves, it looks like, and then the x to the 4 thirds plus c. And so now we have our finished indefinite integral for this one. Okay, a couple more. Uh, if there's ever a time when you look at something and think, ooh, I would need to use a certain rule to differentiate this, you can't integrate it the way it is. So, for example, uh, products. So instead, I'm going to distribute this. We're going to get this distributed first and then integrate term by term. We cannot integrate a product piece by piece. You can't differentiate a product piece by piece either. So don't try. So instead, let's multiply this out. 5 times 12 is 60m to the 4th minus 50 m squared dm. Noticing that we're changing variables here, we're not in terms of x. You do always want to match your differential with the variables in the integrand. If they don't match, then hopefully you're in calc 3 where that won't matter, um, but right now they always should match. Okay, And so now we're going to integrate this piece by piece. And so I have my 60 m to the, okay, 4 plus 1 is 5, divided by the new power 5 minus 50 m to the 2 plus 1 is 3 divided by the new power 3 plus my constant simplify where possible so i have 60 divided by 5 that's 12 m to the fifth minus 50 thirds m to the third plus c and then we have our simplified integral all right similarly to part b there is no way you're going to differentiate a product piece by piece. There is no way you're going to differentiate a quotient piece by piece. So I also cannot integrate a quotient piece by piece. If I have a monomial denominator, we are lucky enough that we're going to be able to distribute that denominator. So we'll write that step here first. If I can distribute that into 12t to the 8th divided by t to the 3 halves minus t over t to the 3 halves, we want to reduce each of those and so that gives us, we're doing the integral of 12. Okay, so that's 16 halves minus 3 halves. That's t to the 13 halves. And then uh, 2 halves minus 3 halves, that's t to the negative 1 half. Just getting common denominators and subtracting those powers. Now that you have them piece by piece as part of a sum or difference, you can integrate them separately. So we're going to have our 12, leave a little space, times t to the add one to the power, one is two halves, that's gonna be 15 halves, 13 halves plus one is 15 halves, then divided by the new power or multiplied by its reciprocal, so times two fifteenths, minus, leave a little space, 
Okay, so I've got t to the negative one half plus one when I add one to the power. I could even be writing in some of these like step ones, like plus one to the power, plus one to the power. And then, so if I take add one to the power, negative one half plus one is positive one half. And so if I divide by positive one half, it's the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal, multiplying by two, then our plus c. If we get things simplified, we can re uh, reduce this by three. So that gives us five and four. So it looks like we're gonna end up with eight fifths, t to the 15 halves minus two, t to the one half plus c. There we go.